All right, guys, welcome to a sneak peek into the collective. It's a mini collective. Um, we are aligning it to exactly how we do things in the collective, except it obviously won't have all the content that you have in the collective. So if you wanna know what everyone is posting about all the time, what goes on in these secret cult meetings that we're in, this is it. And hopefully in this class, when we go over response and stimulus generalization, you see that we teach things a little differently, but I think the overall result is that you learn this shit to a different level and you will not forget it. So I like to always know ahead of time who struggles with stimulus and response generalization. Anyone, I need you to call yourself out in the chat or out loud, but if you're gonna do it out loud, you better mute yourself right after. Um, I do. All right, okay, great. I think that was Yashira? Yes. Okay, Yashira, great. Um, what would you give yourself on a score of one to five? How great you know it. Five is like, bitch, I'll be, I should be teaching you. Or one is like, fuck this feeling when it comes to stimulus and response generalization. I want to say maybe a two. Okay. So you're like, kind of fuck this feeling, not totally, but like, yeah. <laughs> leaning towards fucking this feeling. All right. So Yashira, did I say your name correctly? Yes. Okay, perfect. So you are my target. I need you to tell me how I do at the end. I'm taking a baseline. I'm about to do an intervention on you and teach you and we'll see how this goes, all right? Sounds good. All right, here we go. And oh, I'm not sharing my screen. Oh, so for starters, I also wanna tell you guys, if you want to fit in at the collective, you need to get out every pen that you effing own, any highlighters, you need to get a nice piece of paper. Um, when it comes to the actual collective, I tell you to get a nice notebook, spend a little more in a notebook than you would typically spend. So you're excited about your studying, pair it with being reinforcing, all right? So get it out. Um, you might become addicted to pens and all that, which is fine. It's a much better replacement to other addictions. So get them out. You're gonna write the notes with me. Um, I'm not sharing my screen still, LOL. I see that's, uh, by the way, I should tell you guys, I'm Liat. I have severe ADHD. I usually have lipstick on my teeth and food in her teeth and like just shit everywhere She's water there. in my teeth even possible i'm, I'm casey, all over the place. and i'm casey and i teach with liat we run the collective and um i took the collective when liat was teaching it when she first started teaching it and i knew asap not only were we meant to be in soul sisters but that she knew too she's like you need to come teach for me when we teach together there is a fire and a magic that I don't think really can be replaced ever. So um, I'm still letting people in, but yeah, so that's who I am. And I, uh, you join the collective and you get- You might've heard us on Behavior Bitches. We're the two annoying girls. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> that's us, the annoying ones. Yeah, hi. All right. So in true collective fashion, if anyone's in the collective, whenever we get to this slide, we say, and don't forget- Don't. Steal our shit. <laughs> Don't steal our shit. Exactly. Don't steal our shit. We just do this as an antecedent beforehand because we were told this is what you have to do to protect your shit. All right, next. We go through collective 18. This is not collective 18, but we're pretending like it is, like we have this random number and expectations. All right. So you'll have the class number, set expectations. Tonight we're going to cover stimulus generalization response generalization and stimulus discrimination, all right? Those are the three things you are gonna know about by the end of class tonight. Then we go to our tip of the day. Tip of the day is pick and stick, all right? When you are picking a study method, whether it's ours or you're using a different program or you're studying through something on your own, you need to pick and stick with that method. All right, if you are a ADHD space cadet like myself, um, I probably study the seven dimensions, like the beginning of studying, the beginning of the book, like 13 different ways because I have shiny ball syndrome. So if I see like nice deck of cards on Quizlet, I'm like, oh, I better go study that. Oh, okay, now I'm gonna use this manual. Oh, okay, I'm gonna use that. 
oh, wait, I'm actually going to go to this class being offered. I'm going to do this. It results, I mean, yes, I probably know seven dimensions very well as a result, but I probably could have done just as well <laughs> by picking with one thing. And if I would have kept moving around the entire time, I wouldn't get through the material that I need to get through. So it is hard to get into that behavior momentum in the beginning of being excited and feeling like, is what I'm doing working? But you need to stick with it. It's like when you run, you have a runner's high when you've been running for a little bit. The same holds true here. So pick and stick with a study method because and commit to it. That's what you're doing. That's what you're going to do. If you're going to be in the collective, you're going to do your readings for class. You're going to show up to class. You're going to use our exact assigned program that you the telling you exactly what to do, right? But stick with whatever you decide to do. All right. And I think I preach to myself because I'm someone, again, who like could be weird many ways. And motivation of the day. You need to make sure you are doing this for you. And something very big in our collective in Study Notes ABA is finding your why. Like, why the fuck are you doing this? What's your reasoning? You could say for me, but for me, like, what part of you are you doing it for? Are you doing it because you are dealing with a stress knowing that you can't put food on the table for your kids? Like, you don't, or you are not getting reliable hours. You were told you couldn't do anything your entire life. Like myself, you had three fingertips fall off and you thought life was going to be over and you could never do anything again. Like, what is your why? You need to realize you're doing this for me and you need to write down your reasons of why from the get-go because there's going to be days where you're not as pumped up with big dick energy like myself right now. And you're going to be like, why the fuck am I doing this? I'm literally torturing myself. So you need to remember your why. All right, rant over. We will now move on to class. Hopefully I got you guys a little pumped up. Let's start learning. And just so you guys know, we do this during every single class. We have tip of the day and motivation of the day. And I know it fires me up, it fires Liat up, and it leads into a kick-ass class. Ain't that the truth? And we take the notes with you. So you're just going, like, we're right there with you. We're no PowerPointing your way through this. It is note taking with you. Here we go. Uh, Karen, hi. I have to see. Okay, so you guys could see all this, right? All right, so first we're gonna go through stimulus, then you have the stimulus from stimulus, and we're gonna go through there and then we generalize. And if we generalize, we obviously are gonna need multiple stimuli because if you have multiple stimuli, you're gonna need a single response, you know? So, like, that's that page. And then we go to the next page and it's response generalization. And I'm just kidding. All right, here we go. Let's get started. Get your pen out. We're writing a title on the top and we are writing. Today's theme I'm thinking about doing, I'll do fall colors. I need you to write the word stimulus at the top of your notes. All right, and then you're gonna draw two arrows coming out because we're talking about things that have to do with stimulus. There's two things we talk about and they are, let me see, new color. We have stimulus, generalization, and we have stimulus discrimination. All right, sorry, these people try to come in are popping up. Let me just move that to the side. Yeah, I'm admitting, don't worry, just close that. All right, so. I don't like how that looks, guys, I'm sorry. I'm a little, like I need my notes to be reinforcing too. All right, so we're talking about st stimulus generalization and stimulus discrimination, all right, now. Before you do any of this, before we get into any further learning, I need you guys to write something in front of it that you will always write in front of these words. And that is, multiple stimulus 
But yeah, you have to unmute yourself. I try to, but I can't as a co-host. Yeah. All right. You need to write the word multiple. All right. So now it's reading multiple stimulus generalization or multiple stimulus discrimination. So I'm going to give you the wordy textbook definitions beforehand, and then we are going to break it down in study notes ABA language. So stimulus generalization is the tendency of new stimuli to evoke responses similar to those elicited by another stimulus. What the fuck does that mean? All right, stimulus generalization. This is when we have hashtag multiple stimuli, hashtag one response. It's like two girls, one cup, but it's two stimuli, one response, all right? So for anyone who doesn't know what that is, go look it up after club. No, I'm just kidding, don't. Um, so this is, we have multiple stimuli in one response. What does this mean? We're about to talk about this, but I first want to go back to basics. Hopefully you guys in your grad school programs have learned about the three-term contingency. Stimulus, response, Stimulus. Do you guys know this three-term contingency from school? Also known as the ABC. Yep. Yep, Lexi, that's right. Exactly. So stimulus response stimulus. When we're talking about stimulus generalization, we're talking about being able to respond to multiple stimuli, okay? So what do I mean by this? So typically, let's say that I teach you guys um, let's say I'm teaching a young student how to um, um, write their name, right? And I've, I've worked on the BCBA, RBT, and I'm teaching the student how to write their name. And I, when I teach them at school, they're using a red Crayola pen, or sorry, red Crayola crayon. Now, so they there's the presence, there's that, the first stimuli or the A, right? The antecedent of a, the presence of a pen or a crayon, damn it. Sorry, I love pens. Now the response is they write their name. They gain reinforcement for this. Good job, you wrote your name. Now, without me teaching them how they're gonna write with every single pen they're ever gonna find in their life or writing utensil, they could write their name. And when I draw this out, it's gonna make a lot more sense for you. Why was I writing that there's multiple stimuli? Let me show you. So here. So in next to this S over here, the first S we're gonna write. Let's say, okay, we have stimulus, uh, stimulus one, stimulus two, stimulus three and stimulus four. Okay, so let's say the one thing I trained you on, I taught, like, this is important. I remember I have a brother with special needs. And one day my mom was out of town, he was on medication. And I remember my dad being like, I'm teaching this kid to take an effing pill. This is getting too complicated, smashing it all up. And I'm teaching him how to take a pill, right? And he taught my brother how to take a pill. I think they started with like little sugar capsules, right? So they taught him in the beginning. So let's say, Someone taught me how to take a Tylenol. I have a Tylenol. That's my stimulus. My response would be that I 
swallow it, right? And someone taught me how to take a pill. You take a Tylenol, you swallow it like this, great. So we have a response here. Now, without training, because I know how to take a Tylenol, one day I get prescribed a new medication I've never been prescribed before. And it is Xanax. Yay, Xanax. No one taught me how to take Xanax in particular, but because I know how to take Tylenol, I could generalize with other stimuli, the stimuli here being Tylenol, Xanax, right? And I, what am I gonna do? What response am I gonna engage in? Swallowing it. Yashira, you see, you get it already. Here you go. I'm killing it. You're going to swallow it, exactly. Right? Now comes along, you're in fourth grade, you're Liat, and you get diagnosed with ADHD. What do I get? The blue pill, Adderall. What do you think I'm gonna do with it? Swallow it. <laughs> yep, swallow it, exactly. Now, this is stimulus generalization. I could ultimately have as many circles as I wanted over here, right? As many stimuli as I want. And this is what we have in life, like all the time. Like you have never been taught every shade of red, every red item you're ever gonna see, right? But you know what red is. Yes. So let's say I was forming a concept, all right? And I'm trying to teach a kid what red is. Like, hey, this is red. Okay, here's a stimulus. When you see this, Casey's gonna say. Red. You're right, this is red. And by the way, do you guys see what's happening here? The, the last part of the contingency would be reinforcement, right? That's the consequence or the last stimulus over here. So you have the Tylenol, you swallow it, you have reinforcement, right? Relief removal of a headache. So let's say over here, I had a, this, this marker, this big one, and I see, and Casey sees it and she says, red. You're right, that is red, right? So the stimulus ahead was the red marker. Now we go to the reinforce, I mean, the response in the middle, she says red. You're right, this is red. There was a the reinforcement. Then Casey's probably never seen this type of pen before. I don't think she's seen any types of pens because she doesn't have any. Um, and I judge her for it, but let's say, okay, here's a different kind of shade of it. She sees this. What are you going to say? Red. That's right. This is red. Okay. She's never seen this exact pair of scissors in her life. She's going to see it and she's going to say red. That's right. One response, multiple stimuli. If there are multiple stimuli, and one response, the answer is stimulus generalization, all right? There's never gonna be multiple stimuli and multiple responses for a question like this, all right? Now, something else comes up and that's stimulus discrimination. And we are going to write the definition of it here, the boring version. And the answer is, I not the answer, I'm sorry, I get excited. When we learn to respond only to the <laughs> the original stimulus and not other similar stimuli. Okay, so in this situation, we want you to have stimulus generalization because I want you to be able to go, like if you get diagnosed something later in your life, like me, for example, I always have like a new autoimmune disease like every few years, they're gonna give me a new medication. I need stimulus generalization that I could take the pill regardless, right? Now, we also need stimulus discrimination. 
there's going to be things in life that look like a pill. And I'm going to say, no, you can't sit with us. I can't swallow you. You are, that's not dirty. You are not a pill. All right. So what does this mean? Here we go. Actually, you can swallow that. Let's do something else. Okay, let's say you have a little... A penny. Sure, you could do a penny, a glass bead, whatever it is, glass bead or penny, you choose, right? You could even have another stimulus five over here. That's a penny if you wanted it. Right. And so when it comes to this, you have one stimulus is Tylenol, one stimulus is Xanax, one stimulus that's an Adderall, and one stimulus that's a glass bead. Are you going to swallow the one that's a glass bead? No. Hope not. No. Why? Because of stimulus discrimination. Okay. So stimulus generalization is saying hash. Ugh. One. Hashtag, you can sit with us, right? Like, okay, you're red and you're red and you're red and you're red, right? You can sit with us, right? This is showing what fits within a stimulus class. But we also need to, to really understand, let's say what the concept of red is, or to really understand what the concept of a tablet is, you need to know what the fuck it's not, all right? Because there's gonna be things in life that are close, all right? So let's say, I don't know if you guys could see this color. Can you guys see it's like not red? So you're gonna see colors and there's gonna be things in life that are more obvious, right? So like, this is red, this is red, stimulus generalization, red, stimulus generalization, red, stimulus generalization, red. You can't even see this part. So let me make the red part show, right? And then there's gonna be things in life that are more obvious, like something like, or hopefully more obvious, a color like this comes up and you're like, no, like you're not gonna call this one red because you're discriminating, right? No, you're not red. You can't sit with us. Hashtag between, you, you are in between another stimulus class. We're gonna have to make another class of green. But you're gonna have things that are borderline, very close, like this. And you are going to need a tight degree of control to understand that this is not red right? This is concept formation. When we are forming concepts, you need to know what something is and what something is not. All right. So the same goes to understand what a tablet is. You need to know what it's not, right? You need a kid not to swallow the tab, the penny. So this is an example of stimulus generalization and stimulus discrimination and how we use both all the time to learn. When you're studying for the exam, you're trying to under, at first when you're studying something, you're gonna use, and you're not gonna be necessarily using one or the other. You're probably using both to form any concept or learn anything new, all right? So when you came to class today, you're like, oh, oh my God, I learned something, stimulus generalization. Both response generalization and stimulus generalization are forms of um, generalization, right? They fit within a class. They fit within a stimulus class. They're like, the, they're in the same group. But then when you start learning further to really understand the concept of stimulus generalization versus response generalization, which we're gonna get to, you need to know how they're different. Like you need to know when you take a test that you would choose the stimulus generalization question instead of the response generalization answer. I would say answer for both of those, I got excited.
So, and you're also going to learn stimulus discrimination if you think about it like this, okay? So we have the three-term contingency, and we know we have the stimulus, the response, and the stimulus. So when you take the Tylenol, you swallow it, you come into contact with reinforcement, it's going to be negative reinforcement, you've removed the headache, right? When you take a Xanax, you swallow it, negative reinforcement of removing your stress. Adderall, you swallow it. Um, it could be positive reinforcement, like you're actually getting shit done and like you're seeing, it, or I mean, getting it done would be negative reinforcement, would also be positive. Someone's like, Leah, you're finally getting your stuff done today. If it's a compliment that I like, whatever it is, right? Or maybe I could get paid because I'm getting work done. That would be positive. Now, how would we learn about stimulus discrimination? By coming into contact with the contingency of the consequence. I take a glass bead, I swallow it. Nothing happens. So it's either an extinction or punishing because I'm like sticking my finger in my butt trying to pull this bead out later, okay? They'll probably punish the behavior. So this is how we learn along the way of stimulus generalization versus discrimination. When things are, some are reinforced, some are punished and put on extinction. But when you see a test question, you need to say, are there multiple stimuli? If yes, and one response, the answer is stimulus generalization. Or if it's talking about choosing which one is not the same stimulus, it is going to be stimulus discriminating. You're discriminating, you can't sit with us, all right? And one hashtag I forgot to add, stimulus generalization has a loose degree of control, meaning like, yeah, sure, you could sit with us, you could sit with us, you can, you can, right? Stimulus discrimination has a tight degree of control. Like, yeah, dude, you're effing close to being red, but you're not red. You can't sit with us, okay? So it has a tight degree of control. Can you say that one more time? Sure. Maybe thinking. just because I can't see what you're holding up, but like things that are not the same, but maybe have the same feature. So why we say it has, so we say a loose, we say stimulus generalization is a loose degree of control. You're finding all the different things that could possibly fit into a class, a stimulus class, all right? That's a whole nother class. You'll have to join the collective to hear about it. Um, but you need stimulus discrimination too, tight degree of control to say you can't sit with us, right? This is not red. I don't know if you guys could see it. It's like magenta. Sorry, can't sit with us, all right? So that is stimulus generalization and stimulus discrimination. Now, we're gonna talk about response generalization. You got a light bulb. That's something we do in the class too. I live for the light bulb moment. All right, response generalization. This too. Should have the word multiple in front of it. Like you should never see these words without the word multiple in front of it. Because now it's telling you there's multiple responses. All right? Yes, exactly. I like that you guys are finishing my sentences. All right, so we're gonna write down the long boring definition and it is the extent to which a learner emits un, untrained responses that are Functionally equivalent to the train target behavior. Okay, we're basically just writing that down for fun to practice handwriting practice because now let me explain it to you after I take one sip of this. Okay, so 
This time we are talking about multiple responses one stimuli, okay? So again, you guys know the three-term contingency. It's that, stimulus, response, stimulus, okay? Now, when you get an example in life, we are now gonna look, are there multiple stimuli or are there multiple responses? So, and I'll make sure to say, I know Leah will, but when you get questions like this on your exam, any type of generalization questions, write out this exact thing. Do the circles, do the SRS, and fill in the blanks. It will help you so much. Yep. These are, now we have multiple responses, one stimulus. And guys, remember, a stimulus is, can, literally can be anything in the environment, okay? It doesn't have to just be an event. It can be a person. It can be a, a thing that happened to you. It could be a place. It could be a, anything. So a stimulus is just anything in your environment. So now, let's say I have, let's say you are in California, okay? You're visiting California or you live in California and you come into contact with this thing called marijuana, okay? Stoners, I apologize if I drew the wrong amount of leaves. I'm sure you'll get over it. All right, so you have marijuana leaf, okay? Let's say you were at a college party and someone taught you how to smoke out of a bowl. I heard kids do this or something. Um, okay, you could smoke it out of there. You smoke it out of there and what's the consequence gonna be? You get high as fuck. High. High as fuck, exactly. So you figured out the function of that behavior you were trained to do gets you high as fuck, exactly. Now, you have that same stimulus. Let's say you don't have a bowl with you, all right? Sometimes life gets hard and you don't have the right tools, but you just, you don't have a bowl, but you just happen to have a huge bong, okay? <laughs> you don't have the bowl, but the bong just is conveniently sitting there, right? Look at that thing right there that you didn't have before. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow, who knew? This is probably not a good drawing but you smoke out of the bong and what happens? You get? Hi. Hi, exactly. You came into contact with that same reinforcement. That is an untrained, functionally equivalent functionally equivalent response. It's still getting you high, right? All right, and then you get creative one night and you're feeling your chef hats on, right? And so what do you do? You have nothing to smoke out of. That is supposed to be a fucking brownie. <laughs> I apologize. A brownie? It's a weed brownie, but it looks like a cube brownie. I like it. They color it in, that's much better, yeah. All right, there you go. It is a weed brownie. You do it. You have the marijuana, the stimulus there. You cook it into a weed brownie and eat it. The consequence is? You get high. And then I got high. And it's like, and then I got high. And then I got high. Right? It's all these. Every single one of them, you're getting high. Now, here we go. What about when you have, you're out of this. Now you've done all these and you are stuck with a rolling paper, okay? What are you gonna do with that marijuana? You're gonna roll it into a? Blunt. Joint. Joint. You guys are very smart at your weed knowledge. You could also have an apple in one of them, not that from experience, but mm -hmm. an apple could work too. 
Yeah, I heard that from a movie one time. Um, here we go. So then you have a joint, you're gonna smoke it, and then what? And then you get high, and then yeah. you get high. <laughs> Sure, and this is response generalization. One stimulus, multiple responses, right? We do this all the time with things. Like I had a bottle of wine recently and we had left a bottle opener at the lake. And so I didn't have one here and I'm like, how am I gonna open this? What am I gonna do? So I had to take out all my functionally equivalent responses to figure out how to open it. That's not how I was trained. I was trained to use a wine opener. Well, you could use a shoe. You could like do a, like a knife. You could do multiple different things to get it open. Exactly. So when you are trying to figure out the difference between stimulus and response generalization, you need to remember that word multiple in front of it. Is there multiple stimuli or are there multiple stimuli or are there multiple responses? Because if there's multiple responses, it's gonna be a response generalization. If it's multiple stimuli, it will be stimulus generalization. All right, now let's put these on the same page to make sure we are comparing them. So let's say you have a test question. So having a wine bottle you cannot open and needing something else to open it creates a CMOT, absolutely. Okay. All right, so we have a stimulus, response, stimulus. On your test, you should have this written down, okay? On your test, you could also do this. All right, so let's say you have stimulus one, stimulus two. I'm oh, sorry. So you have a test question, okay? It says, Casey, your BCBA has been trying to help you pick up guys, okay? There's a guy in the clinic who Casey has been teaching you to say, what's up, boo, right? So you say, what's up, boo? One day you see the guy and you say, hey, hottie. The next day you see the guy, you say, um, what's going on? In this situation, what type of generalization is happening? So knowing that, okay, so I know there's a guy, there's some stimulus in the environment, it's this guy, okay? It's a hot guy. And what is she doing? She's one time she says, hey boo. One time she says, what's up? One time she says, howdy partner. One time she says, hey cutie. Those are multiple responses, right? And one stimuli. So you need to fill the blank in here. So look, when it's like that, it would be drawn like this. Right, then you could take it again. I'm going to delete these ones. One of my favorite examples. Let's say you see all different kinds of boobs, right? You see saggy boobs, you see perky boobs, you see hairy boobs, you see one longer boob, right? You see all those. Any of them you see, you're gonna say, those are boobs, right? What is that? Is that stimulus generalization or response generalization? Stimulus? Stimulus, stimulus exactly. Let's draw, let me draw a visual for you because I love to do this. 
Nice job. Uh. You'll learn about this. Leah says, oh, a lot. curly cube off the side of it you know you could have like boobs with like pasties on them right you would have all these and you would say boobs right or so titties multiple you say, you want. one response now what about this what about if i added another circle in over here The, let's see. It's, it's a butt. It looks very similar to boobs. Would you agree? I, I need to make it, right? Yes. It's a butt. But what's it called? The fact that I would not say boobs to this. It's similar, but it has a tight degree of control. What do we call it? Discrimination. Job, nice. Exactly. Because truthfully, if I saw any of these pictures and I said boobs and I was having someone tack boobs, I'd be like, you're right, that is boobs, right? So you need to take questions on the test and you need to fill them in like this. So you can either do it by drawing like multiple stimuli, multiple responses out and filling it in, or you can, draw them out, which I've taught a lot of people in the past. I say, draw this one for multiple response generalization, right? With the one stimulus and the multiple responses or draw this one for the stimulus generalization, multiple stimuli generalization. It really helps. I'm telling you, I've done it for every question that comes up for stimulus or response generalization or a question that you think might be generalization. It helps so much to just draw it out and be like, okay, I'm labeling it, labeling the stimuli, labeling the responses, and it will help you. Perfect. All right, guys. So that Let's practice some questions. Yep. Believe it or not, that is, a, but before I do it, I need to know from Yashira, do you feel like you have any better understanding? Yes. What would you give yourself as a score? Um, I'll do like an eight. I think I need more practice, but oh, shit, I only put it through five, so I'll totally take it. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> so so yeah, I'm five. <laughs> I'm waiting for the day when I choose someone for a baseline and they're like, honestly, no different. Sean and Jacob went from a two to a four. That's awesome. And okay. now we're gonna do three questions because after every collective, we always do 10 questions to practice. So for this one, we'll do three questions. Send your questions before we go there read them, send them to either me, Casey McDaniel, or Leah at Studios ABA. So in the chat, you'll do that by like, it says send to everyone. You'll swipe down and do to Casey McDaniel or to- Do not send it to everyone because people will be like, what the F? And that is reactivity and they won't be able to answer their own questions. So send and it to the enemies up. before you even start. Here we go. All right. It is night one of the collective. Hashtag yeah. You are getting organized AF by pulling out all of your favorite note-taking goodies. You have fine liner pens, jelly roller pens, friction erasable pen, Sharpies, milk liners, etc. With all of these pens, you can write your name and your crush's last name. Who doesn't do that? Mm. Writing your name with all of these different pens is an example of what? A, stimulus generalization, B, response generalization, C, response differentiation, or D, stimulus discrimination. Like I was always Casey, some kind of last name forever until I got married. And then I didn't take his last name. So it's yeah, actually- know, that's a joke on me too. <laughs> <laughs> Good answers. I mean, Smith are just so 
basic. I can't. <laughs> Love him to death, though. Amazing answers. Yes, it is A. It is stimulus generalization, right? There are what there is one response writing your name and your crush's name or taking a note and you're doing it with multiple stimulus perfect right you have is that milk liner fine liner pen jelly roller my favorite is a friction oh, erasable pen i know liat probably hates this one <laughs> It was three, and then you have a, what was the other one you said? Friction. The friction of race, yeah, the friction one. Okay, so I have my multiple stimuli. Response. We got, just kidding, too basic for me, but whatever the name is, right? You write out the name that you're imagining you're gonna marry, okay? So you could do it with any pen, untrained. All right, the famous saying, beg, borrow, or steal. I don't care how, just get the money. Best represents which ABA term? Is it stimulus discrimination, stimulus generalization, response generalization, or stimulus control? You guys must have been listening tonight. Yes, the answer is C, is response generalization. Right, they are functionally equivalent. I don't give a shit, get the money. The stimulus, if you filled it in yourself, would be money. You need the money, right? So you're going to beg, borrow, or steal, and you will get access to the reinforcement. So maybe all different responses, multiple responses, one stimulus. Yep. Oh, let me label that. All right. Last one. All right, Liat has a shit ton of pens. Hashtag study notes ABA, how we came to be. Liat has a pen for each type of note taking. When it comes time to teach the collective, she has to be able to pick the Apple pen out of 2,589 pens so she can take notes on the iPad. Liat being able to pick the pen or pick the Apple pencil um, is an example of what? Is it stimulus generalization, stimulus discrimination? Response generalization or response discrimination. Good work, good work, good work. You can't sit with us. I love that. Thank you. Nice job. The answer is B. E, stimulus discrimination. You can't sit with us, right? You are the one that's different. When I need to pick something out, I know they're all pens, but I need this specific one to access reinforcement. If I try right on my iPad with any other, like a Sharpie, I'd probably be pissed, right? So you guys learned something today. That's good. Nice work. Right. So, do you have any questions? Let me stop the recording. Thank you for coming tonight. Love you, mean it. Actually not letting me, oh, there. All right, here we go. And pause.